All right, thanks for watching. So, if you graph functions using calculus, you may have heard of horizontal asymptotes, which means that the graph approaches a certain constant at plus or minus infinity. There are also vertical asymptotes, which means that the function blows up to infinity at a finite point, but it turns out there's also another kind of asymptote that's very use useful in general. It's called a slant asymptote. And here's a definition. If you have a line, let's say ax plus b, it's called, it's a slant asymptote to f, slant asymptote, or oblique asymptote to f at infinity if whenever you take the limit of f minus the line, it equals to zero limit x goes to infinity of f of x minus your line ax plus b, it equals to zero. In other words, let's draw an example of such a graph. Let's say f looks like that. It eventually looks like a line. Then, if f approaches a certain line, ax equals to b at infinity, ax plus b, then we say that this line is a slant asymptote. And this just really means the distance between f and the line, it goes smaller and smaller. So in the limit, f becomes indistinguishable to this line. And today, I will show you a bunch of methods of finding those slant asymptotes. So here's the most systematic one. So method one. Suppose f of x equals to 2x cubed plus x squared minus 1 over x squared plus 4. Well, if you take this equation and you divide by x and take the limit, eventually you will find this. So f of x minus x minus a over x, which is a plus b over x, which we ignore, equals to zero. And you indeed get that a is somehow f of x equals to x. And in fact, a equals to the limit of x goes to infinity of f of x over x. And that equals to the limit as x goes to infinity of 2x cubed plus x squared minus 1 over x times x squared plus 4. Sure, you could look at all this a bunch of times, but here, because we're dealing with rational functions, I think it's just easier to factor out the highest power. So here, if you factor out x cubed, you get 2 plus 1 over x minus 1 over x cubed over, I guess, x cubed times 1 plus 4 over x squared. The x cubes cancel out. Those terms go to 0, and you're left with 2 over 1, which is 2, which tells us that at least the slope of the slant asymptote equals to 2. And then how do we find b? Well, it's simply b is if, uh, then how about this? If f of x, let's say, is equals to ax plus b, then b equals to f of x minus ax. Except, since we're dealing at infinity, we have to take a limit. So b, that equals to the limit as x goes to infinity of f of x minus 2x, so that equals to the limit as x goes to infinity of 2x cubed plus x squared minus 1 over x squared plus 4 minus 2x. Of course, here the nice thing to do is to put everything in a common denominator, so it's 
2x cubed plus x squared minus 1 minus 2x times x squared plus 4 over x squared plus 4. And you're left with the limit as x goes to infinity of 2x cubed plus x squared minus 1 minus 2x cubed minus 8x over x squared plus 4. And the nice thing is the 2x cubed, they cancel out, and you're left with the limit as x goes to infinity of x squared minus 8x minus 1 over x squared plus 4. And if you do the same trick with factoring out the highest powers, you should eventually get that the limit is x squared over x squared, which is 1. So, we get that a equals to 2 and b equals to 1, and therefore an equation of the slant asymptote is 2x plus 1. So y equals to 2x plus 1 is a slant asymptote at infinity. By the way, at minus infinity, you do the exact same process except with, uh, instead of infinity, you let x go to minus infinity. And I believe you actually find the same one, so cool. It's both a slant asymptote, both to at infinity and minus infinity. Which tells you that the graph, no matter what, what it looks like, let's say again this f, eventually it approaches the line y equals to 2x plus 1. By the way, it's totally okay to cross that line. You know, it doesn't have to be strictly greater than this. Okay, and so the first method was the systematic method. Sometimes I think there are easier ways to do this. And let me present you two other very cute methods. Especially since here we're dealing with uh, rational functions, I think one of the nice things we can do is to do long division. So method two, long division. And let me show you the great American way of doing long division. So again, the function is the same. f of x equals to 2x cubed plus x squared minus 1 over x squared plus 4. So, let's now long divide this thing by this thing. And so let's do this. So 2x cubed plus x squared, again, the coefficient of x is 0, plus 0x minus 1, divided by x squared plus 4. So, to eliminate this x squared plus 4, sorry, to eliminate the 2x cubed factor, from the x squared plus 4, let's multiply this by 2x, and you get 2x cubed plus 8x, and everything else is 0, so 0x zero squared plus 0. Then, let's subtract this, and you're left with x squared minus 8x minus 1. And to eliminate this x squared factor, Let's just add 1 to it, and we can subtract. So x squared plus 4, so 0x, and you're left with minus 8x minus 5. Which tells you that, in fact, 2x cubed plus x squared minus 1 is x squared plus 4 times 2x plus 1 minus 8x minus 5. And then let's just divide by x squared plus 4. So x squared plus 4 over x squared plus 4. And now we have this nice cancellation. And you're really left with the following, 2x cubed plus x squared minus 1 over x squared plus 4. And hey, 
look at that, the slant asymptote just pops out. It's 2x plus 1 minus 8x minus 5 over x squared plus 4. So this is surprisingly already our answer. But in order to show that this is indeed our answer, we have to take the difference and show that it goes to 0 at infinity. But now, that's not too bad to do, because you're left with 2x cubed plus x squared minus 1 over x squared plus 4 minus this thing, 2x plus 1, equals to minus 8x minus 5 over x squared plus 4. But if you take the limit as x goes to infinity of that, notice the degree here is 1 and the degree here is 2. So if you again do this factoring out business, you do get that this goes to 0. So by definition, since f of x minus 2x plus 1 goes to 0 as x goes to infinity, this tells you that y equals to 2x plus 1 is a slant asymptote at infinity. How cool is that? And in fact, not only that, you can also show that it's the same thing at minus infinity. So, this is really cool, but of course, long division only works for rational functions. So for other kinds of functions, you're a bit screwed. But, by the way, you may have you may have heard that I said the word Great American Long Division. Let me show you why. Because I went to a French school and I learned it the French way. And it's a little bit of a pain because the way you do this, you put your dividend here, 2x cubed plus x squared plus 0x minus 1. You put the divisor here, x squared plus 4. But then the problem is, if you do this, and if you went to a French school, you know the struggle, you eventually run out of space, and you have to do your work like this. Whereas here, look at all the freedom that you have, you know. This is America, you know, we love freedom. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's why I like this American long division. Okay, so that was the second method, and then it turns out there's an even easier method, which I call the Nike method. Why? Because you just do it. So, method three. Just do it. Because just like here, where it's apparent where the, what the slant asymptote is, sometimes it's also apparent what the slant asymptote is. For example, if you take this, f of x is 2x plus 3 plus sine of x over x. Now, of course, if you look at the form of this function, you may guess that this is a slant asymptote. And in fact, to show this, you have to show that the difference goes to 0. So f of x minus 2x plus 3 equals to sine of x over x. However, not by using L'Hopital's rule, but by using the squeeze theorem, you find that this goes to 0 by squeeze. Which tells you that, in fact, this becomes a slant asymptote. y equals 2x plus 3 is a slant asymptote at infinity. So this function, which looks a bit squiggly, so y equals to 2x plus 3, should look something like that. Da, 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 da. Kind of neat. And by the way, there is nothing that says that you cannot consider more geometric objects. Here we had slant asymptotes which are lines. 
Of course, you could also have slant parabolas, which means the function eventually goes to a parabola and the methods are exactly the same thing as before. So this is kind of cool. All right, so if you like calculus and you would like to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.